How to integrate Jenkins with GCP. In this video, what we're going to be doing is walking through step-by-step -step how to build out a pipeline using the gCloud CLI. We're going to be using our Jenkins controller. It's version 2.319.3. When it was installed, it was installed using install suggested plugins, which means no extra plugins have been installed for this video. I also have a Linux-based agent attached to this controller and the gCloud CLI has been installed on that agent. Down in the description of this video is a link to a gist that has all of the different variations of the Jenkins file that we're going to be creating. So for our first one, let's go ahead and say new item. I'm going to call it gCloud. I'm going to say pipeline and click OK. And for this first variation, all we're doing is just making sure that the gCloud CLI is installed and working the way that we expect. So if we go ahead and paste in the pipeline, and again, this is in the gist, the link to it, again, down in the description. All we're going to do is just gCloud version. We'll click on Save, and then click on Build Now. And we can see from the output that we have Google Cloud SDK 374 and then all of the other different versions available to us. Now, for our example today, what we're going to be doing is just getting a list of all of the zones available for compute. So let's go back over to our pipeline, click on configure, and let's add in one line. And that line is gcloud compute zones list. Again, we're just listing out the zones available to us. So let's go ahead and click on save and click on build now. And what we can see from here is that we're getting a, you do not currently have an active account selected. So even to call the compute zones list, we have to be authenticated. So how do we go about creating that credential? Well, in our case, we're going to create a service account. And then from that service account, we'll get a file that we will then create as a secret file credential within Jenkins. So let's go over to my gCloud console. And I have a project here. Let's go to Compute Engine. I want to verify if it's enabled or not because by default, the offerings are not automatically enabled for you. So in this case, I need to go ahead and create this Compute Engine API. So I'll enable it. And then once it's enabled, we'll go over and create the credential. Okay, now that we've enabled the API to be able to access Compute Engine, let's go back over to I am admin and go to Service Accounts. So let's go ahead here and let's create a new service account. The service account name, I'm just going to call it Jenkins G Cloud. There's that information, our service account description. I'm just going to give it the same. Create and continue. I'm going to be lazy right now and I'm going to create a new role that's just owner and click OK. And then we're not going to add any user access to this, just that one. We're good enough for that. And now we have this account created for us. But this still isn't exactly what we need to create our credential. Let's click into this account that we just created. Let's go to Keys, and let's add a new key. We're going to create a new key. It's going to be JSON, and click on Create. And what's going to happen is it's automatically going to save the file down to our local system. So we'll get that in just a moment. So now that we've saved that file, let's go ahead and click Close here. Let's go back over to our controller and let's create the credential. Now we're going to name our credential a very specific way. I'm going to say Dashboard, Manage Jenkins, Manage Credentials. We'll go here and click Add Credentials. Change this to secret file. And then we're going to browse and we'll go ahead and select our file. And the ID is going to be gcloud oops, dash creds. Same for description. Now you can name it whatever you want to, doesn't really matter, but we're just saying this is the file that I want to use. But the reason why I named it this way is it aligns with the credential usage that we're going to be using in our pipeline. So let's go back over to our pipeline. All we've done at this point 
is create the credential. We actually haven't added the credential to our pipeline, so that's what we're going to do now. So let's go ahead and go into our configuration. Let's change this SH section to with credentials. We're using a file type credential. We're referencing it by gcloud-creds, which is how we named the credential. And we're going to load it up into gcloud-creds environment variable. We still have our version. We still have compute zones list. But now what we have to do is we have to activate the service account. And we're giving it the key file of gcloud-creds, which was the credential. So let's go ahead and click on Save. And then click on Build Now. And what we can see here from this output is that there is a required property project which is not currently set. Now, we could go ahead and set the project directly on the command line that we're running, but we can also set an environment variable, which is what we're going to do. Now, for this environment variable, what we need to do is we need to set that variable name. We'll put this here. But this x colon y isn't the real value. The value that we need to use is the value from our project. So what I'm going to do is go back over to my console. Let's go back up to the root of this project. And the ID that I need to use is the project ID. So I'm going to copy the project ID. Let's go back over to our controller. Let's replace that to where I've got planetpope.com colon API project dash and some number. Let me get rid of the trailing space there. So now we have set our Cloud SDK core project to this value. Let's click on Save and click on Build Now. And we can see now we are getting a list of all of the zones that are available to us for compute. So pretty straightforward. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and be able to revoke the credential that I'm using. So let's go ahead and go back over to our controller. We'll click on Configure. And what we want to do is, after everything is run, I'm going to say Post Always. And we'll close that up. And the command that we're going to run is we're going to run sh gcloud auth revoke and then client email. And this client email is going to be an environment variable that we define up here. And that email value is going to be found over in our credentials. So if we go back over to our service account, this is the email that we want to use. So let's click on that. I'm going to copy this email. Let's go back to our controller. Let's paste this in. Let's remove that trailing space. So now I have this account. Let's click on Save and click on Build Now. We can see here that something messed up. Looks like I got something out of balance. That's fine. Let's go fix that. The joys of doing things almost live, at least from your perspective. Ah, boy, did I already mess it up. Here, got that. Now we're good. OK. Didn't see that at the end. Click on Save. Let's do Build Now one more time. If we take a look at the output. We get our list. And we can see here that we have our auth revoke for this email address, but it's giving us a warning. It says, this appears to be a service account. Service account tokens cannot be revoked, but they will expire automatically. To prevent the use of a service account token earlier than the expiration, delete or disable the parent service account. Well, I'm not going to get into that right now, but we can see here that the revoke credential does have the value of the email. So I'm OK with this for the moment. Finally, I want to go ahead and go back in, and let's take a look one more time at our pipeline. Now, we're currently using with credentials. But I can actually clean this up a little bit more and just use the credentials helper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new environment variable for gcloud creds. So it's basically just a redefinition of what we have here with credentials. But now, with this, I can get rid of the with credentials completely. And it cleans up this block of steps that we're running. So let's go ahead and click on Save and click on Build Now. And we can see here that everything ran successfully, just like what we saw in the previous run. But we don't have to use with credentials. Because of the secret file being a normal credential, the credentials helper within the environment variable makes it a little bit simpler and cleans up our pipeline.
If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.